The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Mark chapter 11, verse 20. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now Jesus had been going up into Jerusalem and on the way to Jerusalem where he was preparing to go to the cross to win the victory that you and I have today. He approached a tree that appeared, it, it was a deceptive tree. It gave the appearance of offering something of satisfaction. But when he got closer to it, to see that the tree was only a deceptive tree, he cursed it and said, nobody be deceived by you anymore. And it lost its power to deceive. Now that was a foreshadowing of something that was about to happen on the cross in the very near future. The next day they're coming back, they pass the tree again. And Peter remembering said to him in verse 21, Rabbi or teacher, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. He didn't say, look at what I have done. He actually turned it to them and said, you, in a sense, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So now Jesus is the one who cursed the fig tree, but now he's inviting his disciples to join him in taking authority over something much bigger, much more established, much heavier much more permanent than just a fig tree. And therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. It's a phenomenal promise. Could you imagine if people really believed that today? Prayer meetings would be the most packed meeting in the house of God. If we really believed, we'd be leaving here tonight, not going home to eat crackers, we'd be going home to pray. And say, God, if that's true, whatever things I ask when I pray that I will receive them, that I will, then I'm going to start to pray and I'm going to believe you. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, this makes it very interesting because he ties this kind of faith into forgiveness. Without forgiveness, this kind of faith will not be known. It will not be realized. It will not be actualized. Now, when Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree on the way to Jerusalem, it was a, a sovereign act. It, it was something that he alone did. And it's a type of the cross. When, when Jesus went to the cross, he took your captivity captive, the Bible says, and gave gifts to you and, and to me. He took authority over that which formerly had the power to deceive us. Now, many of us were deceived by different things. You can be deceived by substance. You can be deceived by relationships. You can be deceived by false self-image. There's, there's, there's all kinds of things that can deceive us. And the fig tree, in one respect, represented that. And when he went to the cross, he destroyed the power of deception, individual deceptions, okay? Things that we went to, we gravitated to, and we thought, this is going to make me happy, only to get close and find out it's a lie. It's, it's offering an illusion of satisfaction. It, it, it's telling me it's going to fulfill me, but when I get close, there's nothing there. It leaves me empty. It's, and, and many of us, if not all of us in this room and online, we've all fallen for some of this along the way, along the journey. We've all fallen for fake trees, things that we, we, were, we were on our way to Jerusalem as it is. It was a place of prayer. We're on our way there, but we got distracted by something that looked like it was a good thing. And it looked like it would satisfy the need that we felt at that particular moment, only to find out it's a deception. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, he took authority. He destroyed the power of deception to deceive any longer. He destroyed the power of, of drugs, for example, or alcohol or relationships, whatever it is, to, to tell you that you're going to find satisfaction there. He destroyed the power of the fig tree in your life. But I find it very interesting that he left the bigger battle to be fought in partnership with us. He didn't say to Peter, well, now I'm going to curse the mountain. Okay, watch this, Peter. You thought the fig tree was something. Now watch what I'm gonna to do to the mountain. And he very well could have done it. He very well could have said, mountain be removed and cast into the sea. And it would have been, right? He was almighty God. He could have done whatever he wanted to, but he invited the disciples into what was a larger battle, into a partnership. And actually, 
He says, whatever you say, if I say to you that whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and believe, doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now, here's what I see the mountain to be. The mountain is the fuel source that allows these deceptive fig trees to prosper in our lives. The mountain is something deeper in us. It's, you know, we, we can spend a lot of our time getting over this and getting over drugs and getting over alcohol and getting over lust and getting over all of this other stuff in our lives. And those are the fig trees in our lives. But the, the mountain is, is, is something of, of weightiness or something of essence in our character that actually allows these fig trees to deceive us or to grow. Does that make sense to you tonight? And so he says, now I want you to take authority over the mountain. I want you to speak to this. I want you to speak to the mountains that are in your life that are allowing these deceptions to prosper. You see, for example, if you're an alcoholic, alcohol is really, it, it might become a problem, but it wasn't your initial problem. Your initial problem was whatever drove you to drinking to make you think that drinking was going to make you happy. It's something in your character. It's, it's, it's the mountain inside of you. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying this repetitiously because I want you to really get this. It's, it's something of your, of your character that you can't change. That's what makes it a mountain. It's, it's, it's some unmet, unmet need. It's, it's, it's some ill formation. May I put it this way? It's, it's something that grew. It's something that, is, that got planted. It's, it's something that, that you and I can't move by any amount of human effort. We, we just are what we are and we can't change it. And so we're constantly fighting against the fig trees that are deceiving us because we're looking in every which direction to find satisfaction. And so we're falling for all of these, these things around us. When you look at the prayer requests on this, this prayer meeting tonight, many, 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 many of the people who are uh, submitting prayer requests or people who are submitting requests for family members or loved ones, they've fallen for fig trees. They've, they've fallen for something, wrong relationships, wrong thinking, wrong practice, something they're putting in their bodies to make them think they're going to be happy. They've fallen for fig trees, but the fig trees are not the problem. Because if, if all we do is focus on fig trees, master, look at the fig tree, you cursed is withered away. And if that's your only testimony, I used to do this, now I don't do it anymore, but you've never dealt with the mountain. You've never dealt with what let this tree grow in the first place. Where is it drawing its nutrition from? What is it in my life that allows this to grow in my sight? and deceive me into thinking that I, if I just approach it, I'm going to be happy. Jesus said, I will curse the power of the fig tree, but I want you to curse the mountain. I want you to, to speak to the mountain. I want you to speak to that thing in your life that, that just is there and has no right to be there. That thing that is allowing these, these deceptions to grow. Because folks, if we don't deal with the mountain, you're just gonna be dealing with fig trees the rest of your life. It'll be one fig tree, another fig tree, the next fig tree. You'll be running all the time to things that you think are gonna make you happy. It can be anything from alcohol to sports to relationships, whatever. You just think it's gonna make you happy and it just leaves you empty at the end because there's something inside that is not satisfied by the presence of God. Here's the real point. To realize this victory over the mountains, he says we have to let go of the past and embrace the future. God promises us. Many people can't go into the future because they won't let go of the past. That's why he ties this kind of faith into forgiveness. It's amazing. You, you, you'd say, well, do these verses ever, like he's talking fig trees and mountains and suddenly forgive? Isn't that a kind of a, uh, isn't that another thing for another time? No, he ties it in to mountain moving faith. Therefore, and now he's saying, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and doesn't doubt, but believes, you'll have what he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever you ask for when you pray, believe you receive it and you will have it. And in other words, in addition to these thoughts or in conclusion, whenever you pray, you stand praying. If you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. If you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And, and David, the psalmist, for example, said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I can pray all I want. And, and really, I see it, it's something simple that Jesus is saying, if you want a future, let go of the past. Let go, don't hang on to the past. Let go of the past. Let go of, of whatever you thought was going to make you happy or whatever you, made you unhappy. 
or whoever was used to do that. Let it go, let it go. As the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3.13, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Paul, there was the formula, there was, there was the pathway. Paul says, I've not achieved, I'm not fully there yet to where I need to go. But I, one thing I'm gonna do, he says, I'm gonna leave behind what needs to be left behind. I'm gonna, if God says, let it go, I'm gonna let it go. And I'm gonna press forward to this high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You see, that's when the mountain moves. You see, when you and I, you see, when, when, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they came out of, they, the, they come out of bondage and darkness, but they didn't go into the place of life and promise because the mountains were still there. It, 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 you know, they talked about mountains. There were mountains, there were giants there. And they just said, we can't do it because the mountains are there and the giants are there. And the, the, the problem is they were willing to come out, but they were not willing to go in. And so many people are like that today in the body of Christ. They're willing to come out of what used to hold them captive, but they're not willing to go in to what God has for them in the future. And these people all died in a dry place. And a lot of people are attending very, very dry churches today where it's boring. There's no life. There's no anticipation of God's presence. In order to convince the people that God is there, there has to be light and smoke and all kinds of activity, just like the prophets of Baal on the top of Mount Carmel. They had to do all kinds of things to try to convince the people that their God was with them. No, you have to want what God wants for your life. It's really that simple. And when you do, you can speak to the mountain now, and the mountain will move and be cast into the midst of the sea. I promise you, oh God, I promise you, this is true. I've seen this in my own life. I, I didn't want to live my Christian life speaking to fig trees all the rest of my days. I wanted to be free from the mountains, the, 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 the things that stood before me that were there to say, you can't go any farther. This is in your way. You can't climb this. You can't go around this. This is too big for you. But Jesus said, I can speak to it. I can speak to it. I don't know what your mountain is. It could be loneliness. I don't know what it is. It could be a wound so deep you think you'll never be healed. It could be just a lousy self-image. I don't know what the mountain is, but I do know that Jesus said, you can speak to it. Can speak. Why would we not do that? For what heavenly reason? Would we stand back with such a promise? Speak to the mountain, whatever that is. And if you don't know what it is, ask God. Maybe you're just unstable. I don't know, whatever the mountain is. Call it by its right name. Ask God what its, what its name is and just say, God, just what is this thing that allows these fig trees to continuously grow in my life? It allows me to be drawn away from one deception to another, always looking for happiness apart from where you say it is. No, I want what you have for me. I want the life you have for me. And when we do what Paul said to do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before, that's when the power to speak to the mountain becomes yours. There's power in prayer. Jesus Christ does not just say empty words. He didn't say, well, look, I gotta fill all these words and fill these chapters, so I gotta say something. No, what he said is truth. What he said is absolute. What he said, it can't be contravened. It was spoken through the lips of the one who created the universe by the word of his mouth. He cannot lie. And if he said, I can speak to the mountain, then I can speak to the mountain. If you are in a place where you don't believe that God can do a miracle in your life, then you're missing the whole point of what this whole season we're now living in is all about. It's more in the heart of God to do a miracle for you than it is in your heart to experience a miracle. I want you to know that. Notice also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.